This episode of Humble History will be covering the Aksum Empire, an African civilization whose role in, in international trade and politics made it a major player in the ancient world. So who are the Aksumites and what were their achievements? Let's get into that right now. The city-state of Aksum, while located in northern Ethiopia, eventually spread its influence across the whole of Africa, spreading to different parts of the modern-day countries of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, Djibouti, and Sudan, and even spreading across the Red Sea and expanding its influence over parts of modern-day Yemen. Although Aksum spread its influence across the Horn and Southern Arabia, it was also influenced back by those same areas. Particularly from Damat, Aksum's predecessor in the region. Damat had strong influence from Southern Arabia immigrants, particularly in adopting the use of the Proto-Ethiopic or Sabian writing system that was also used in South Arabia in modern-day Yemen. However, the writing system is heavily altered during the Aksumite period. Mixed along with the Aga language originating from inland Ethiopia, the Aksumites create the Giz or Ethiopic language and writing system used during the Aksumite period. This writing system is the basis for many modern languages in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Along with Ethiopic Aksumite nobility and merchants were also known to be fluent in Greek, which was the language of international commerce for Aksum's side of the world. In fact, the majority of Aksumite wealth comes from its involvement in international trade. By securing both sides of the Red Sea, it was able to connect the Mediterranean world of Rome and Greece with major Asian empires including Persia, India, Sri Lanka and even China. Its success in dominating the Red Sea trade leads Aksum to create its own currency in the form of gold coins. This makes Aksum the only African civilization to create its own currency in ancient times. And the fact that the coins are made from gold put it on par with a very exclusive list of empires that had the capability to mint gold coins. This leads many to recognize Aksum as a great power in its time, such as the Persian philosopher slash prophet Mani says to his followers that there are only four major empires in the world. There's Persia, China, Rome, and Aksum. But aside from branding its place in the international ancient world, the gold coins also show us the complexity of the Aksumite economy to need a currency. Although the majority of Aksumite citizens were farmers, there were still a portion of society that worked in specialized fields, particularly the fields of pottery, glass making, and stone cutting. That last one is most evident when we see when we see the giant stelae in Aksum that served as the burial mound of Aksumite kings. Each cut from a single rock, these gigantic stelae show the craftsmanship of Aksum stone cutters and sculptors in designing these intricate towers, some shaped, the most detailed shaped to represent multi-story skyscrapers filled with windows and doors and ex and, ex and other details. It also shows the capability of Axum's engineers to transport and erect these gigantic stelae, the tallest standing being 24 meters high and weighing 160 tons. These stelae served as the burial ground for Aksumite kings. These stelae fell in line with Aksum's religion 
whose kings claimed to be semi-divines and called themselves the son of Mara, the god of war. Along with Mara, the main gods of Aksum were Astar, god of the heavens, and Beher, god of the earth. These three male gods formed a triad in the Aksumite religion, a religion that continued up to the 4th century AD until the rule of King Zana, who would change Aksum forever by introducing a religion which has a very different type of trinity in its core. But that is a topic for the second episode of the Aksumite Empire.